hollow ribbing is not really a ribbing. It's a double knitted fabric that resembles ribbing, behaves somewhat like a ribbing and is often used instead of ribbing. It makes beautiful cuffs, head frames, neck bands, button bands, belts, but its main benefit is that it is the best way to create casing to hold elastic band. That's especially handy when we make skirts, toddler pants, or any other project that needs to be reinforced with an elastic band. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make this ribbing that is not really a ribbing. Depending on the way we plan to use hollow ribbing in a project, we can make it right after we cast on stitches. For example, if we are making a cuff, as would be the case right here, or we can insert it inside the project, for example, like I did in this swatch, or we can add it uh, right before we bind off stitches. And that would be the case with skirts and um, toddler pants that are worked from the uh, bottom up. And you can tell how nicely the uh, elastic band looks when it is inserted inside the hollow rib. So how to make this beautiful rib? Take needles that are one or two sizes smaller than uh, the size you plan to use for the project and cast on a number of stitches that is a double of the number of stitches recommended in the pattern less one stitch. So for example, to make a swatch that is six stitches wide, I cast on 11 stitches. So that's uh, six times two less one stitch, that would be 11. That's the setup. Now we're gonna work two pattern rows and we're gonna repeat them until the rib becomes as wide as we want it. So the first row is knit one stitch, then bring the yarn to the front of the work and slip the next stitch purlwise. So you insert the right needle from right to left and slip it off. Then bring the yarn to the back again and knit a stitch. Yarn to the front, slip a stitch. Yarn to the back, knit a stitch. And that's what we're gonna do up until we come to the last stitch. And that would be in just a moment. And then we're gonna knit the last stitch. That's the first row of the uh, pattern repeat. Turn your work. Now bring the yarn to the front and slip the first stitch, just like this. Bring the yarn to the back and knit the next stitch. Yarn to the front, slip, yarn to the back, knit. And keep going until you come to the last stitch in this row. And that would be right here. And in this case, we're gonna purl this stitch. That's it. These are two rows that you keep repeating until your band gets as wide as you want it to be. And when you are ready to move on to the a main part of the project. Here's what we do. We're gonna finish off the band and close that hollow space that is inside this ribbing. So the finishing row will be knit one stitch and then knit two stitches together. So we are getting rid of the um, extra stitches that we cast on and we're gonna bring the number of stitches to the six stitches that we initially planned. And that's gonna be in just a moment, the last knit two together, and here we go. This is a tiny piece of rib, just because we worked only two rows, but if you work more rows, then you would get a wider band like this one, for example. And why is it hollow? Because it is. If you take the needle out, you will see that in fact it is a double knitted piece of fabric and that's exactly where we insert the, uh, the elastic band if we need it. So that's how we add the um, hollow rib when we do it from the cast on edge. But what if we want to do it at the, uh, in, inside the fabric or if you want to do it at the um, at the bind off edge. So how to proceed then? Let's take a look on the uh, let's take a look at the other swatch that I have here. So I have a piece knitted 
on 10 millimeter needles. And let's say I'm gonna make a piece of hollow ribbing right here at the top. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, I take smaller needle that's gonna be eight millimeter needle. And in the first row, I'm gonna add the number of stitches. Uh, I'm gonna add one stitch actually in between each two stitches and to bring the number to the 11 stitches that we had to work the first um, segment of the of the ribbing. So knit one stitch and then make one stitch. So you pick the strand that is between the stitches and then knit it. It doesn't really matter whether it's make one left or right, just use whichever is more comfortable for you and do it um, all the time. So you knit one stitch, then pick a strand between stitches and make another stitch. Then knit one stitch, pick a strand and make a stitch. And so on until we come to the last stitch of this swatch. And here we go. So two things happened. First of all, we increased the number of stitches to 11 stitches. And then we moved all stitches from 10 millimeter needle to 8 millimeter needle. And then we, we're gonna work the ribbing same way as we just did when we started from the cast on edge. But this time I'm gonna use smaller needles. And uh, we start with the second row of the pattern repeat that we uh, we've just learned. So we start by bringing the yarn to the front and slipping the first stitch. Then bring the yarn to the back and knit. Front, slip, back, knit. Front, slip, back, knit. And we keep going until we come to the last stitch. And then, as we already know, we're gonna pull that last stitch. And then you turn your work and you work the first row of the pattern repeat and then again the second row and you keep repeating these uh, stitches, this, these rows until the band is as big as you want it to be. If you don't mind to have the section worked in the hollow rib narrower than the main part of the project, then don't double the number of stitches when you cast on and possibly use the same size of the needles that you will use for the main part of the project. But it's always best to make a swatch before you decide to work this rib without increasing the number of stitches. To download this tutorial as a set of step-by-step -step photo instructions, follow the link in the description. Thank you for watching this video and have a wonderful week. I'll see you next Thursday.